Yo, this is Fat Joe, and I've just taken over the airwaves. This is my channel, Right Vac TV. I just bought it. Board meeting in two hours. This is Thought Leaders on Right Vac TV. So welcome to this episode of Thought Leaders. And uh, today we, we're chilling. we a more relaxed vibe. We're outdoors. And uh, we're hoping to, you know, tease the mind of our guest today in a way that we haven't done with the previous guests because we always want to bring you the fresh new ideas of thought leaders in our country and uh, without further ado i am sitting with the one and only cindy mguni you might be thinking the name doesn't sound familiar but trust me once we're done with this episode you'll know exactly who she is cindy how are you doing i'm great how are you, you good you're looking lovely thank you for having I'm, me oh thank you thank you i mean you. earlier you were you were like like worried is the jacket working is yeah, this working? because you know <laughs> when i present my best self i want to put out my best side well you're looking good oh, thank and you, thank um you, thank you. i think it's it's working how, how do you like the outdoors i love i was saying to um, uh, my friend earlier, I was like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, <laughs> can I have this house? <laughs> People are coming, uh, the helper was bowing, I was like, ooh! <laughs> yeah, well, I could get used to this! No, that's all good, that's all good. You know, it's our first set outdoors, so so I'm also, I'm, I'm liking this, I'll talk to the producers of the show, and I think we should have it as a, not a permanent fixture, but quite recent. Creatively, do you think being outdoors in a scenic place inspires you or intrigues you to think more creatively than more confined spaces? Um, I love outdoors. Outdoors, um, I'm able, I love one of the um, things that I do or I try to do as often as possible is run. Oh, really? Run, walk. Um, well, I haven't been doing hiking ish. I'm scared of snakes. So <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did you just say walk? Yeah, like you, okay, walking. you know, you know that black people have made it when a young black sister like yourself will say, you know, I try to do things <laughs> like walk. <laughs> <laughs> Back mean, in the day, that was our only <laughs> mode of <laughs> transportation. Exactly. <laughs> no, but what I mean is like walking in the in the in the exercise. In the sense of exercising. Like, yeah, in I the sense of exercising. So I. It's I've, just I've, that I never thought walking would, would be, an be like a thing that people like, would get into because that's what you transportation. <laughs> exactly. What? So I I wake up I try to wake up uh well in summer I do like 5:30 or like wow. 5 a.m. So you are an early riser. Yes, I have I am an early riser and it 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 I used to produce a breakfast show. Joe at the time was looking for a producer. He had just started doing the breakfast show on on YFM. Okay. My interview with Fat Joe was at a McDonald's in Woodmeat, <laughs> the one just across the road. As, he had as forgotten. As he forgot. <laughs> and he went home. After his show, he, 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 he went home. He slept. We called him. We called him. We called him. And we couldn't find him. And then eventually he called back and he was like, I'm sorry. Please, can we, please, can we do this? So we had to find the nearest place to his house. Um, and the nearest place was a McDonald's in Woodmeat. Okay. We spoke. And uh, by the end of that conversation, I think it was like a 30 minute conversation. He was like, okay, fine. When can you start? Well, just like that. I was like, okay. So Any I prior experience nah, to producing nah, a radio show zero, then? Zero. Zero. I go back home. He, he says from the 1st of May or 1st of April, no, I, I need to be back. I go home, I tell my mom, I'm like, hey, I have to leave this child here. I have to go and find, you know, I've got a job. And so that's how it started. So I come up, we start working. I'm thrown in the deep end. Joe wants things the way that he wants. He's a perfectionist. He is great at what he does. I had to now learn very quickly. As I'm learning to do the six to nine show, Joe decides a month later that he wants to do a four hour show. Sure. Which <laughs> means more work and more content yeah, exactly. and stuff. Like yeah. I'm new. I'm new in Joe work. I'm new on like in radio. But I learned, I learned. We worked so well together. We did the breakfast show for like a year and some change. Wow. And then he started doing his TV show on uh, on ETV. Mm -hmm. So it was only natural that I I I, I, I moved with him. I was doing the, 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 the research, mm -hmm. uh, doing interviews, um, or 
actually booking um, interviews for him because that's what I was doing on the radio wow, show. Wow, wow. Anyway. Let's backtrack a little bit uh, because I'm interested in the thought process that happened internally because there must have been a thought process um, within yourself that said, you said, okay, this is boring in terms of the pharmaceutical yes, um, yes. internship that you had. Um, what thoughts were running through your head? Were you thinking... Did you know what you wanted to do then? Did you know you'd rather pursue a career in radio? Is that what was burning within you at radio or media or PR always been a passion in you? This is Thought Leaders on Right Back TV. When I got that phone call, it was one of those um, things that, okay, let me go and try out something new because you never know what you're good at until you try different things. Um, and I, 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 I thought, let me go and see what, what this is all about. Maybe I might not even like it, and then maybe I'll go back, um, you know, finish my, my, my degree, and then, you know, find other things. But then I knew that I was good with working with people. Okay. And the, okay. the laboratory aspect of my, of my career did not afford me that. It confined you. It, confined your, it was solitary. Yes, you yes, yes, in yes. a solitary uh, space. But I knew that I, was, I would be good at, um, uh, at, at, at things that involved people and doing different things on a daily basis. Okay. So when the radio opportunity came up, I, I was like, oh, okay, maybe this might be it. But then let's just go and see. And it could not have happened with a better person. Because Joe has been one of those greatest entertainers that we have ever had in this country, and yep. he continues to be. So I, agree I think totally. I, 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 I was always going to find um, a greatness in anything because I learned from the best. Okay. And uh, it's it's my opinion. Like people can dispute it all they want, but yeah. Joe is one of the greatest um, teachers um, and and entertainers that this country has. So he was the one. He pushed me, and I allowed it because I wanted to learn from him, and I did. Wow. I did. So you learned, and then this inspired you to then do what? Um. It. You know what I think. The inspiration was to always have um, a, 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 a great show every day. Okay. Right? Because in my world, at the time, my world was about radio. So I did radio. So even when we moved from, from, from YFM to go to Metro, uh, I remember we put on this, this super crazy midday show. You know, midday shows are supposed to be easy. <laughs> Joe wanted skits. He wanted people to write things. And, you know, it was like a full-on breakfast show in the middle of the day. I'm like, but guy, we're supposed to be wallpaper. But to him, it was either you go all out or nothing. So we had to put together this, this, this great interview. I remember we had strippers in the middle of a day on a Friday. Like, it was... Super entertaining mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. much to the detriment of, of, uh, <laughs> of the anger of, of our bosses at the time. So, I mean, it was always um, wanting to make sure that we have good shows, you know, like on a daily basis. So your, your role as the producer of the show was to then, were you involved in conceptualizing the content for yes. the day? Yes, yes, let's, yes. Let's talk about that, the fine, the fine things about your roles as the producer of the show. What I, what I needed, um, obviously Joe had his, um, his own uh, expectations in terms of um, this is what um, I, I want to do. So I, I, the structure would be, obviously between the two of us, we'd decide this is what we want, but the actual details would then be up to me to find, um, you know, like the, the, the interviews that he wanted to, to, to have and the stories that we, that we talk about and if, if it means that we people need to call in, then I would have to design those. And then every, on a daily basis, we'd then have to uh, get together and go through the show. But um, everything that had to do with who comes onto the show and what questions are being asked and um, what stories we would be putting out 
on a daily basis, then that was my responsibility. Coming up with competitions, but then obviously stations have their own competitions, but then I'd have to go out and find, uh, I remember one of the people, one of the first people that we engaged uh, from YFM was um, the Lokshin culture guys, because oh they yes. were just one starting out. Yes, Chaba. one dance Chaba. So we would call them um, and say, listen, we want to give you a platform. Can we give away some of your stuff? So I think, uh, I mean, Joe um, and, 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 and uh, the show at the time gave those guys like a platform because they were just starting out. Yeah. And I mean, they've grown. They've grown like they huge, yeah. you know, and they had super awesome merchandise. Yeah, so true. I mean, those were the things you'd have Success always though, have yeah. to be on the lookout uh, for like people that um, are, are, are making great moves, moves you know, around the industry and, and give them the platform. Um, I remember um, Proverb, Proverb uh, when we did um, the afternoon show. I was actually going to say he was one of your winners on that yes. show. I, I actually yes. used to listen to that yes. show, by the way. So I remember uh, there's this guy called Proverb. He would always used to call in and he would burn every yes. MC that would call so in. So we'd have, we'd have. So um, that was you rappers. were behind yes. that brainwave. Yes, yes. So we'd have um, the rappers coming and then they go against each other and then people vote and then whoever won that week has to go and um, and and go against another. So it was one of those, you know. And every time when I bump into him, he's like, oh. And he calls me Sis Cindy. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not that old. <laughs> but I mean, it was one of those things, you know, like you played a role in in um, in in highlighting because I mean, his talent was his own talent, mm. you know. But I mean, just to uh, provide that platform, yeah. it was. In fact, it's funny that you say that because in, on the interview that we had with him, those are one of the things we said, and I think he actually did mention you as well. Oh, now that he? I recall, okay, he said he worked bro. with a producer called Cindy, and now she's doing her own thing. And today we oh, have great. you on the show. Oh, you know? okay, all right. Um, so one of the things we highlighted was that true success is that is not in one's own personal success, but it's seen in the success of others. Of others and of exactly. which you are now successfully running your own business. Yes. Let's let's chat yes, a bit yes. about that. So in the years I'm doing radio, I'm doing, you know, a bit of T V. I produce um this breakfast show on Kaya with Bob Mabena. The legendary. Yes, the legendary. <laughs> You've worked Bob, with the all jammer. these legends, yes, man. Right? I mean, I'm sure there is a wealth of uh, experience lying in you right totally, now, totally. which needs to be shared. Totally. So I, I I work with Bob, and then one of the um, uh, uh, um, editions that we had on the show was um, on a Friday, bringing in uh, comedians. Uh, so I think it was in 2010 when we started with Eugene okay. Koza. So Eugene comes in, um, he's doing his thing, he does the Friday five to, um, uh, eight to nine, and then he goes out and he does his own, you know, one-man shows and da, da, da. And then, because I'm just like, nya papa. <laughs> I'm like, guy, why can I do a PR for you? You know, like, uh, because I think he had only done his first or second one-man show, I can't, I can't remember. Um, and I just saw a gap and I was like, guy, I mean, let me do this for you, you know? And then he was like, oh, okay, cool. So he he, um, he did, I think it was his second one-man show. So he, I then um, organized interviews in all the towns that he was going to. Um, and then he wanted me to come with him. And I was like, okay. I don't mind because he already had a producer, promoter. Um, but then I was just plugging in where I, I saw the gaps. So when he wanted to do his third one-man show, <laughs> he said to me, I want you to do my third one man show. I didn't know anything about venues, booking venues, opening tickets at Compute Ticket. But then he gave me that opportunity and he wow. was like, please, can you please run with this thing? Jeez. And I was like, okay. I mean, uh, I can only find out if I'm good at it, if, I'm, if I do it. Because if I don't do it, then I won't know. Wow. And then we did his first one man show, uh, his third, uh, which was called Even Me. Brilliant. Great. And then within the same Even year... Even me, were you part of the, the conceptualizing of that name and everything as well? I came up with that name, actually. Wow. Because it was, I think it was at the height of, um, uh, uh, I think, uh, our president, Jacob Zuma, because okay. he would do it. Even me. And was like funny. <laughs> oh, because he would okay. make fun of, of, yeah, of yes, the president yes, and yes, uh, yes. On, on, the, on the radio show. I mean, so I, I, like, mean I mean, uh, our, our politics is the best content for comedians, exactly. so says so Trevor Noah, too. I, like, I remember calling uh, this one venue. I won't say it by name because okay. we've, they've grown to respect and, and, and uh, apparently the guy is scared of me now. <laughs> 
So I call this guy and I'm like, my name is Cindy. And he's like, who? And I'm like, no, I want to book. I, I remember I wanted to book three shows. And he wanted to discourage me to book one show because he didn't know that I knew what I was doing. And I said to him, listen, all you have to do is take the money that I want to give you sure. and leave the rest up to me. Wow. We went on to sell out four shows in three days. Jeez. Jeez. He came up to me on, and all of this I was doing um, um, on the phone, my cell phone and my, and my, and my iPad. Because I was, um, I didn't, I don't have an office space, so I was doing all of this. And the day, the first day that I met the guy that I was talking to was the first day of the show. Wow. He came up to me and he said, Cindy, I'm sorry. I apologize because I didn't know what, uh, what it is uh, that you are capable of doing. And um, please accept my apologies. Wow. From everything that you've said right now, there's, there's one attribute about you that, um, is the defining character of what people say, you know, fearlessness and resentlessness is something that we should all have. And that's what I'm seeing from you. you you've got this fearless up for any challenge, even though you've never walked that path before. Where would you say that stems from? Um, I think it stems from uh, wanting to prove uh, things to myself first okay. and wanting to prove to the people that are placing their trust and their careers in my hands. Okay. Because I'm not the one who's gonna be on stage telling jokes or I'm not the one who's gonna be behind the, the microphone um, conducting uh, a, a radio show. But um, I always have to make it a point that I don't fail. But the only way that I can do that is to push myself as much as I can. and. It's it's actually quite funny that it, um, because one of the um, Eugene um, just you always used to say my fearlessness is what he admired about me because I I didn't know anything about comedy he he he, he, he entrusted me with like um, his career you know and I I was like okay you know what if we don't if this thing that I'm saying we should do fails I'm I, I I'm sorry but you know what let's try it you know. <laughs> Uh, and I mean, it's, it's not because my thing is, um, whatever it is that I say, I think we should try is for the betterment of, um, of, of, you know, like the advancement of your career, career and, and yours as um, well. yeah. And I mean, our success. So it was one of those things and I was like, you know what, let's do it because I mean, what, what, what do we have to lose? So I always used to say, um, whether with Skuma or with Eugene, I'm like, you focus on the jokes. I'll focus, focus on everything. On the, I'll yeah. focus on the administration and everything that has to do with uh, putting the show together. Make sure you make people laugh. That's and your I'm, only and job. And I mean, let's talk about Skumba's show. I mean, Lyric Theatre sold out how many times? Um, gosh, I can't even... I've lost count. Like, his first <laughs> one-man <laughs> show... <laughs> That's uh, when you know you're hey, doing well. Right? Oh, I, I don't I remember like, how so, many times I've sold out. So, let me tell you. Let me tell you now. So, with, um, with doing, doing Eugene's show... I, and then, you know, this great successful um, tour that we have, uh, 2013, I get my contract, um, uh, my contract wasn't renewed at Kaya as a breakfast producer, breakfast show producer. Okay. Sure. And that was where the main bread was coming yes, from. Yes, because okay. that was my monthly salary. Mm -hmm. So when my boss said, thanks, I was like, I was sweating. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? But I thought, you know what? I've come this far with uh, what with God being like the 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 main driving force behind everything. Amen. To you know that. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was like, I can't let a person, uh, another human, determine whether I'm gonna fail sure. or not. Sure. Because I'm not made by him. I'm, sure. I'm not his. So when they told me that they don't want to, they don't want my services anymore. I figured. Okay, let me let me give this comedy uh, producing promoting um, thing that I'm doing a go, shot. Let me just in. let me just go give it my in. because it would have been easy for me to, to go and look for another job. Wow! Uh, and people look are calling one time. Can we look for a job for you? And I'm like, mm, okay, but you know what? I kind of like want to do things 
on my own. But then you can't throw that in people's faces because Especially people at want. That point because yes, yeah. I've got a child to feed, I've got rent to pay, I've got a car to pay. You do understand? So when people wanted to um, call, you know, contact, like, okay, let's call and see if they can't. But then I go back to, um, uh, I remember the one interview that I went to was uh, um, back to Metro. But then my salary for the position that they wanted was, they looked at me and they're like, Girl, come on. You can't be serious. <laughs> yeah. You're joking, right? And I was like, but this is what I was getting paid. Yeah. And then, but I had to go to that interview. I, I, I couldn't let the people that wanted me to, um, to, to make sure that I've got a monthly salary, I've got, I've got a paycheck at the end of the month down yeah. because they made the call. They yeah. spoke to whoever. So I went to the interview, even though my heart was not in it. I had to do it. And I think um, my the salary that I was giving them and the fact that I really was not crazy about being employed again. Allowed you that, to just um, walk yeah, away. Yeah, you know, so yeah. um, I didn't get it. And I was like, guys, please don't um, don't even sweat it. Don't sweat Anymore. this yeah, stuff. Yeah. So I, I then decided that let me do this thing full on. Wow. This is Thought Leaders on Right Back TV. So you were also strategic in your own in, career. Yes, my own career because I don't want to burn out and I don't want to spread myself out too thin by having all these people expecting the greatness that they've seen and then I'm, I'm a letdown because I now am spreading myself too thin because I'm taking on way too much, way too early. So um, so people call and then I'm like, okay, let's sit down. Let's, let's, let's see. Tell me what you want. And then I'll be able to tell you if I'm able to, to, deliver to deliver on what it is that you want. We've heard of your challenges. We've heard how you've overcome them. We've heard the things that keep you inspired and what uh, intrigues you to continue to have that creative edge, which I think is very important in your industry. Cindy has, is a producer, a promoter for, for different comedians. Now I want to do something that is... is, is, is um, uh, beneficial directly be benef to you. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, it'll involve, basically what it is, is I want my company to, to put together shows, unlike me putting shows together for, 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 for comedians. Okay. So I'm putting together um, shows that, I am, uh, that I'm going to shoot um, and, and, and sell um, uh, for TV. Oh. So basically, it'll be me hiring a comedian this time and say, okay, fine, I want to do a 13-part um Comedy series, series yes. yeah. I Where mean, comedy, uh, comedy is just blown up in this country. It's it become, has, it has. It's just become Especially huge. Especially with, with, with the young black comedian. Yeah, I mean, let's look at the most famous and uh, global one right now, mm -hmm. Trevor mm -hmm. Noah. Yes. Let's, let's just, what do you think about what he did, you know? What do you think differentiates him from everybody else? I feel like Trevor <coughs> knew what he wanted out of life. Like, he, I feel like he knew what, what it is that he was, he, was, he was going for and he went for it. Because he did, um, he did shows around Joburg and, and Cape Town and whatever, like around the country. But he's always known that um, this is what he, he, he wants to do and he went for it. He, uh, he traveled um, and he did shows in, in Europe and he did shows um, in, in the UK and then he went to the US. I mean, it's not cheap. Going yeah. to the U.S. and 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 working. Yes, I mean because he sold out um, the the, the theatro. lyric, the theatro yeah, and the lyric theater as well, and it seemingly what he's done because you are saying it's not expensive is I mean it's not cheap mm. is he took that money didn't blow it up on houses and cars although I think he got a few yeah well, he <laughs> but invested knocking invested on his more door. invested it back into, into the himself. business yes yes you know the biggest investment that you could ever make right is yourself i always say like um if you make 10 rand and it takes um eight rand for you to 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 you know like you take the other eight rand and you invest it um in something else and you live off the two rand that's you investing in yourself and yeah. that's what i always say to to guys i'm like so let's let's inflate no let's inflate that figure because i like that breakdown so i make a million rand yes right you, and it, it only takes me, let's say, um, 800,000, well, sorry, it takes me 150,000 to yeah. live. Yeah. So you're saying take the 800,000, invest it, live off the 150, and have the 50 spare. Yes, because what it is, no one 
will ever invest in you before you invest in yourself. If you know, like for instance, um, the, the money that we made from shows last year with Kumba, I said to him, take a little bit of that and, and live off of that, but then invest the rest into the shows that we're doing this year, those that need to, you know, because I mean, um, venues need to be, to be paid. There's travel, there's, there's accommodation, there's this, there's that. Da, da, da. So that money is, is literally investing in what it is that you, that, that, that you do instead of, you know, making all this money and then just living it up. This is Thought Leaders on Right Back TV. You are, okay, so my last words are, you are, you can, you, you are whatever it is that you believe you, you can be. So don't let people um, deter you from what it is that you want to do. Um, always believe in yourself and comfort zones are not your friends. Always go out and, um, uh, and, and, and go into unfamiliar territory because uh, you, you never know what you're capable of doing until you do. So don't let people dim your light. So always believe in what it is that you that you that you that you're capable of doing. Um, and always, you know, trust God. He's there for you. He's there with you. So I mean, um, for those that believe in God, uh, that is. So um, yeah, and just do you. <laughs> this is Thought Leaders on Right Back TV.